question about your impact on Bloomsbury. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you aware of the impact you've had on Bloomsbury and the value of the so. company? I think I have, yeah. But I've got to say, people can be as cyn well, people will be cynical. The fact is that Bloomsbury took me when a good few very well established publishers said, no way, it's totally uncommercial. And they took a risk, and they took a risk because someone there thought, no, I, I like it. <laughs> and that was as simple as that. We, th we think it's a good book, we'll take it. And um, they should get credit for that. They should, I can't be cynical about Bloomsbury, you know, because I, I would say, in fact, that after the birth of my daughter, the day I found out Bloomsbury had taken my book for publication was the happiest moment of my life. So I can, I can be nothing but profoundly grateful to them. And they took a risk. It's very easy to look back now and think it was a dead cert. No one else thought it was a dead cert at all. I know, but the whole thing's changed. You know, the word phenomenon is always attached to the mm -hmm. whole Harry Potter thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the Forbes magazine quote that you, you, know, you apparently earned 25 million quid last year. Mm, don't believe everything you read in the press. I'm not going to lie. I mean, <laughs> by anyone's standards, and certainly by, by mine, I'm now rich. Those, by anyone's standards. But trust me, trust my accountant, the figures you're seeing banded around, some of them are so far from the reality, it's, it's, um, it's actually funny. And how does that affect you, or doesn't it? I mean, I know it makes you come up. You know. What, having money? Yeah. The single biggest change, and only people who have been extremely broke, I think, will really understand this. The single biggest change it makes to my life, I don't worry about money every day. That's, I'm, every day I'm grateful that I'm not worried about money, because for a good three years, nearly four years, I was, on a daily basis, very, very worried about money. So it's wonderful to be able to go into a shop and buy yourself a skirt or whatever it might be. Sorry, the button, you're Don't using keep, the microphone with the, with the bracelet. I knew, sorry, I knew you were yeah. going to say that. Even if I saw you looking, yeah. I knew that's what it yeah. So wonderful though it may be to, um, to be able to afford things, um, and that means nothing to me to compared, compared to the fact that I'm not worried anymore. I worry about different stuff now. Uh, and there's also the kind of inevitability about that this level of success, mm -hmm. you know, the British attitude to success, is not an American one. No, and true. That you know you're in for, I mean, Anthony Holden wrote a piece in The Observer, for example. Bless him. Um, Anthony yeah. Brackeridge wrote a, you know, was interviewed for The Telegraph. You've seen all this. Yeah. Where people have had a go. A bit. Well, I'll be honest with you. There are a lot of things that would upset me. That doesn't upset me. Number one, because I never expected anyone to like the books anyway. So the fact that there are people out there who don't like them is, yes and. <laughs> How, I was never misguided enough or arrogant enough or naive enough to think that everyone would love my books, ever. Number one. Number two, I've been through a lot tougher than Anthony Holden saying he doesn't like my books. So I think I'm big enough to take him. Brave enough to take him. Yeah. So. Well, I'll the skirt of the uh, middle dress of your book of which Christmas present. Just lean in, please. At the, uh, at the Carnegie yesterday? No. No, no, no the, um, I looked at some of the old material we have which you've never used, which is you know, your speech at the uh, Book Awards, was it? Where the Gwyneth Paltrow speech. Gwyneth All I. <laughs> That's great. All I can remember of that speech is the Gwyneth Paltrow reference because I had nothing prepared. Yeah, the, um, look at each other. Oh, look at each other. Yeah, just, uh, talking, yeah. talking, talking. Now, and there's the Jerry Hall bit, too, which is quite good, I thought. Well, well Jesus <laughs> Christ, who wants to be photographed? This is Jerry Hall. Can you well, imagine? I'm five foot five. I'd come up to a crotch, probably. When's your birthday, um, by the way? It's any minute. It is any minute, yeah. Last day of July. Last day of July. 35? 